Hello everybody, I welcome you all to today's video. Today we are going to see the top 10 skills needed for every PhD in biology. If you are somebody who is going to enter PhD or if you're somebody who's already doing a PhD, in this video is definitely for you. I'm Dr. Vaishali, academic specialist at Biotechnica. Biotechnica is a space where we discuss and guide you anything and everything regarding your bioscience career. Come, let's explore the topic. The first tip that we are going to talk about the skill is being organized. Now, what does this mean? This means that how or being organized is very important in your PhD life, right? Because it involves planning. You have to plan your research work and when to finish, what to finish, all of this. So this requires you to be uh, organized. Secondly, you should make notes. You should be able to make notes of everything that you do in your lab because during these four years, it's very easy to, you know, uh, forget or not remember what you've done uh, during these four years. So it's very important for you to make notes of every small thing, whatever worked, whatever did not work in your PhD. Third is you should be able to keep all the information at one single place so that whenever it is required, you can just go there and then take that up. Especially in your thesis writing, this being organized is definitely going to help you. Second is networking, right? So networking is nothing but making meaningful connections with people, with people you that you already know, people who are in this industry, right? Making meaningful connections with them. Secondly, also uh, talking or getting introduced to new people in this, in your field as well. So these two are very important uh, when you have to network with people. Why is networking uh, important? Because it's going to help you you know, in your research work itself, if you need help or you need guidance of any sort or even after your PhD, this network is definitely going to help you. Now, how can you do networking? It's through attending seminars, conferences, any expert talks, so or even through social media like LinkedIn. So these are the different platforms through which you can network with people from your industry. Third, that you should have the skill set to embrace the changes because especially in PhD, change is the only constant. You know, there are a lot of uh, changes that might come when you are doing PhD. Maybe your research topic has changed. Maybe you're not getting proper results and you will have to, you know, change or get diverted into a different space altogether or even your, uh, you know, research guide can itself change. So these are different types of changes that you will uh, face when you are in PhD. So yes, you should have the capability to embrace these changes as well as have have a calm mind, um, you know, when you are reacting to these changes, because if you are furious, if you are frustrated, then, you know, you won't make the right decisions. And till you get back on your feet to that particular calm space, it's going to take a lot of your time. So yes, make sure that you do embrace the changes that comes your way in your PhD. Next is investigative skills. Now, what do we mean by investigative skills? Especially in a PhD, you should have the capacity to identify the problem, the problem statement that you uh, would be taking forward, uh, you know, for your PhD. What are the problems? You should be able to forecast them. Second, the approach. Now, what is the approach that you take to tackle this particular problem? Is it step by step? What is the milestones that you have, you know, kept in mind to, uh, you know, approach this particular problem. So these are the few investigative skill set that you should possess. The next is research skills. Now, research skill obviously is what you do day in and day out at the lab. It's nothing but your data collection. So it's basically, it comes from the instruments and the tools and techniques that you use. So these can be um, any instrument that you use in your lab uh, according to your research problem and your 
uh, statement. So it could be say uh, gel electrophoresis or it could be PCR, it could be flow cytometry, it could be mass spec, so it could be uh, SEM or TEM, so it could be any of these instruments. So it's important for you to have the skill sets as to how to use these instruments and also how to analyze the data that you get out of these instruments. So that is a very important skill set that you have to uh, you know, develop in the research uh, area. The sixth is the analytical skill sets. Now, what do we mean by analytical skill sets? So this is the way that you uh, can interpret your data. Now that now that in the previous slides we saw uh, the importance of identifying a problem, approaching that problem, as well as collecting information or the data for proving your hypothesis. Now the next step is how do you interpret these data? Now few of the examples of analyzing these data is through graphs, tables or figures. You can, um, you know, uh, analyze all of these using maybe a software tool as well. There are a lot of software tools that's available uh, that you can use for analyzing these um, data like GraphPad Prism, right? That's one of the data. That's one of the software that you can use for analyzing your uh, data set that you've got through your research. Now, the next uh, skill set that you should carry is, of course, the teamwork. Now, why is teamwork important? Teamwork is important, especially when you are going for doing collaborative work with other scientists or other peers from your uh, from from your field, right? So yes, you should learn the you know art of collaboration, and also if you're going for interdisciplinary research, then you should be able to do teamwork with people or team from other disciplines as well. So here also you should learn teamwork, like how uh, you know how to share the knowledge that you have and how to gain the knowledge from them as well. The eighth point that we are, eighth skill that we are going to talk about is the writing skill. Now, why is this writing skill important? Definitely in your PhD, you will have to write papers. You will write, maybe have to write book chapters or review articles. So any of these, so obviously you will need to also uh, write a few grants right, for your funding. So all of these are very important uh, in your PhD life. So yes, you should have the necessary technical writing skills that is required for your PhD. So uh, for your publishing as well, uh, the, the art of writing, the way you have written, also for your thesis, right, it's very important as to, to how organized you are in your writing, whether the, you know, the chapters that you've written is coherent to each other, whether it has a flow and whether the important things are being written properly. So these are the few things that's necessary for you to uh, do for a writing skill. The next skill set that we're going to talk about is the presentation skill. Now, this presentation, um, you know, uh, is very important when you are doing a PhD because it is nothing but a representation of your work. So whatever work you have done, whatever data you have collected and whatever analysis that you have done with your uh, data and whatever you have concluded and added a new information uh, to the research world, but if you are not able to represent that particular work to the public, then it goes, you know, not as, uh, you know, as, as good as it has to be as uh, famous as it has to be. So it's very important for you to represent your work properly. So that mainly comes through presentation. So presentation skills are something that's uh, really an important thing that every PhD scholar must have. Second is it's going to build confident uh, confidence in yourself to do the research even better right so when you once you're able to put across whatever you've done to the public and the public is also able to grasp it and then they're able to give you feedback and they're able to appreciate you then it's going to increase your confidence to do the research even better now the 10th and the last tip that we're going to see is of course the reading skill this may not be the 10th skill actually, it should be the first skill itself because your PhD research starts with 
reading right so basically because you will be doing your literature review before even you come up with your problem statement so this is where your reading skill uh, starts it's important for you to read every uh, section of the uh, paper especially when you're starting new right do uh, you know make sure to read the whole paper uh, right from abstract till the conclusion because it gives you an idea as to how a paper should be and what are the key components that that you have to take out from that paper right so it's you'll be reading research papers or book chapters or even review papers so when you are reading as you go on as you go further in your phd if you have reader if you have read say like around 200 to 250 papers and then you will uh, know or you will learn the knack of what to read and what not to read uh, for your research especially from a paper so till you get that knack it's very important for you to read the whole paper and take the major takeaways from them so here we come to the end of this particular discussion. I'm sure it was super helpful for all those PhD uh, scholars out there and all those aspiring PhD scholars out there to know what are the important skill sets that you require for doing a PhD. Thank you so much and see you all until next video. Bye.